things for you. Amen? In other words, they, they have no ending. Amen? Boundless blessings have no ending. Amen? In other words, God will begin to bless you and God will continue to bless you. God will continue to bless you. God will pour out His blessings upon your life. How many of you want God's favor? Amen. Amen. I want God's favor. I need God's favor. I, I cannot live without God's favor. With God's favor, I'm able to thrive. With God's favor, I'm able to do what I do. With God's favor, it gives me strength and power. God's favor encourages me. And it's all because of His boundless blessing. So, we are blessed. But how do we continue to be blessed? I want you to turn to the scripture that will tell it all, and that is Malachi chapter 3, that familiar scripture. Uh, we know the scripture, but I think sometimes we perhaps lose sight of it. I think sometimes we, we perhaps get mixed up in, in what God expects and what God wants us to do. So I want to begin with uh, Malachi chapter 3 and verse 7. If you would follow along with me. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. That's one thing we've got to do. We've got to keep the ordinances of God. And we got to return unto me, he says, and I will return unto you. That takes a step, doesn't it? It means we've got to make a step toward God, and God will come to us, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. The Bible is very clear, church. He says, bring ye all the tithes uh, into the storehouse. What's the storehouse? This is the storehouse. Amen. Make no mistake about it. Amen that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. That's what, church? Boundless blessing. Amen? Amen. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. America can't say that anymore. Amen. And people do not look at America as they used to look at America and say that is a blessed nation because their God is the God Jehovah. They don't look at America anymore as being a delightsome place because people have lost the presence and the power of God. And how did they first do it? They first done it by stopping bringing the whole tithe into the storehouse. People began to rationalize in their minds and they began to say, you know, I've been given to the church and given to the church and I haven't been able to do, to do this and I haven't been able to do that. And you know what? I think I'm just going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do it when I want to do it. I'm going to do it how I want to do it. I just want to have a free life to do whatever I want to do. I want to be able to live a spontaneous life. And I want to just be free to take off and do anything I want to do, whenever I want to do it, however I want to do it. 
That's what people have rationalized in their minds. And they rationalize it in their minds because the only way that they can do what they want to do out there in that world is to stop bringing the tithe into the storehouse. They want to use that money for something else. They rationalize it and they say, well, you know, I pay all my bills. I, I take care of my family. I give this and I do this for folks. Let me tell you something. You serving in some type of capacity and doing something out of your heart for somebody is not tithe. All right? Let's be clear on that. It is not tithing. You cannot make a deal with God and say, well, God, you know, I really want to and I really need, uh, that's the word we use, I really need uh, to use this money elsewhere, but, but I feel like what I'm doing and how I'm serving and, and how I'm working and, and what I do in my community and, and what I do with this club, uh, I feel like it takes the place of my tithe. And it doesn't, church. It goes against exactly what God's Word says when He says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Amen. The whole tithe. Now I know that there are going to be times, church, that you don't agree with what leadership does in a church. I know that there are times when other churches, they, they have uh, their, 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 they take up their tithes and their offerings and they, they, they have this money and they have this budget and they do different things and they make decisions based on what they believe the Lord would have them to do. And people would say, well, I don't agree with that and I am not going to put my money in that storehouse until they do what I want them to do. That's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong attitude. Why? Because it doesn't line up with the Word of God. God says bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. You cannot rationalize it. According to Scripture, Malachi saw two great hopes. If you read all of Malachi, you'll see this. He had two great hopes. That is the first coming of Jesus Christ and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now we've already had the first. We're waiting on the second. And church, I can guarantee you it's going to happen. He's coming. He's coming. Amen? And it's going to be a whole lot sooner than a lot of people think. Amen? And so Malachi's message was for a selfish and for a worldly nation. That's America right now. Amen? It is a call for complete surrender and a promise just as complete and just as boundless. God wants people to surrender to Him. But America doesn't surrender to God anymore. America will not bow her knee to God anymore. Not right now, but there's coming a day that they will. Amen. When every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is uh, Lord. It's coming, church. Amen. God wants you to trust Him. He wants you to trust Him by completely giving yourself to His ownership. Now, there is going to be a statement a little bit past midway of this message that is going to bring all of this into a nutshell. And you need to write this down. You need to remember this. You need to remember this statement because it is as true as any statement that I have ever said behind this pulpit. God is calling. In verse 10, he says, Bring ye all the tithes uh, into the storehouse. Amen? Before this, he said, Return unto me, and I will return unto you. There needs to be a rededication of America. There needs to be a rededication of Americans. There needs to be a rededication of churches 
unto God. We need to return unto God. People need to return unto God. People need to be told that they need to return unto God. Uh, you see, church, the ancient system did not represent giving of part. It really expressed God's ownership of all. See, God doesn't own just a part of you. God owns all of you. Amen. Amen? And as a matter of fact, God owns everything that we see around us. Amen? God owns the economy. God owns all of the money. God owns all of the cattle. God owns all of the land. He's just letting us use it for a little while. Amen? And all he asks is for us to give a portion back. Amen? I'm in uh, the 401k program with my company. Okay? I'm going to just use this for an example. I'm in the 401k program, and the money, the percentage that comes out of my check comes out pre-tax. It comes off of the very top of my money, right? And I give a certain percentage, and then my company, for every dollar that I give, uh, they give me 60 cents. Now, how many of you would give a dollar for a dollar sixty? Right? That's good money, right? It's free money. And, and everybody that comes to work for us, as soon as they're eligible, in 60 days, can sign up for the 401k program. And I tell the guys when they start, I say, look, you need to get involved in this right away. Sign up for the 401k, even if it's a small percentage, because the company is going to give you free money. It's a blessing, right? Well, you bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Now, you might not get a monthly statement. I get a, I get a quarterly statement on my 401k plan to, to see how it's doing and to see how it's, you know, progressing. But I, I, I don't miss it. It comes right off of the top, just like my tithe. It comes right off of the top. That's, that's the first thing that we do is tithe. We always have and we always will. And you know what? I've lived under boundless blessings the whole time I've been a Christian. And that's the honest truth. Never gone without. Matter of fact, we have prospered over the years. Now, it doesn't happen overnight. You can't give a tithe one Sunday and expect God to work this incredible financial miracle for you on Monday. Okay? It takes time. God wants you to trust Him. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. You see, bringing tithes to God is simply expressing to Him His absolute ownership in us. It's letting God know, yes, God, I'm here to serve you. You have all of me. You have all of me. And all God asks for is 10%. Right? There's other things that come out of my check with T.A. Love and Company. It's called taxes. Right now, it's averaging about 36% of what I pay every single week. They take it involuntarily from my check. All right? It's not voluntary. Amen? <laughs> and they don't give me 60 cent on top of it. I'm not guaranteed anything. I am hopeful that one day I'll get to retire and there'll be money still there, right? But we're not sure of that. We don't know that. We don't know that that's going to be there, especially the way things are run and especially the way things are done. So who am I counting on? counting on God. Yes, I have to pay taxes. Yes, I'm in a 401k program, but the best program I'm in is bringing the whole tithe to the storehouse. Glory to God. And that's what's blessed me over the years, and that's what will bless you. Amen? 
He wants us to do as Abraham did in offering Isaac. What did he do? Abraham was going to give Isaac as a sacrifice. How? In faith. You give that tithe in faith that God is going to bless you. Amen? He wants us to prove everything is yielded to him. That's what God wants. Amen? Only then will he commit unto us a larger trust. Amen? We don't, we don't need to dishonor God by not doing what God wants us to do. We need to give wholly of ourselves and be a cheerful giver. Don't, don't, don't be like, well, all right, I'm going to give that right here. I don't really want to. Be cheerful. Be grateful that you can give it. Be thankful that you can give it. Amen? And pray that it's used wisely. We need wisdom. Yes, we need wisdom. Uh, yeah, obviously we need wisdom. Pray for that wisdom. Pray that God will bless us. Pray that God will bless the leaders in the church. Pray that God will bless our church. Pray that God will lead us and guide us. Pray that God will help us to thrive. Uh, that we will see that new church one day. That's the vision. Amen? And this is the statement. I want you to remember this one. Amen? Listen to this. Because I thought it was pretty profound as I kept going over this message and kept going over these notes. The reason God wants us to be all His is because He wants all His to be ours. Amen? That's the reason God wants us to be all His is so His can be all ours. God wants to bless you. But what are you doing to be blessed? Are you doing what God wants you to do? Are you doing according to the Bible or are you rationalizing it? Are you saying, well, I don't really agree with this and I don't really agree with that, so I'm going to give my money elsewhere. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my money over here. Because then I can control it better and I can, I can do like I want. No, you bring the whole tithe to the storehouse. And you let God lead and guide those that are in charge. Uh, so have you given him all the tithe? Tithe in church is a sign that all we have belongs to God. It, it, it proves to God. You're not proving to me. I've never checked in the 10 years that I have been a pastor. I have never, ever, ever checked to see what somebody tithes. Ever. And I don't ever plan to. You know why? Because that's your tithe. That's between you and God. And you are the one that has to step out on faith. I can't step out on faith for you. Not to mention, I shouldn't have to go to somebody and say, Hey, I noticed in the statements and in the, in the bank account registry that you're not really tithing. Preachers shouldn't have to do that. And any of them that do it ought to be ashamed of themselves as far as I'm concerned. Uh, because all they're concerned about is the money. What I'm concerned about are your blessings. I want to see you get blessed because by you being blessed, uh, then we're blessed. By you being blessed, uh, the church is blessed. And then the another one is blessed. And another one is blessed. And it becomes so boundless. It becomes so much, church. Uh, are you with me this morning? And we don't have room to hold it, glory to God. Uh, we can get there, but we got to step out in faith. And we got to trust God for what God says He will do. Uh, don't rationalize such a great investment. There's no place for deals. Amen? 
I want my company to be successful. I hear people talking about the company and the company this and, and the company that and putting the company down and, and not really wanting to do this and not really wanting to do that when it takes everybody's effort to be successful. I want my company to be successful. I want my company to make money because if my, my company makes money, guess what? Mark makes money. Amen? Amen. And they've always proved that. I'm very thankful for the management that we have because they make good decisions and they have to make some difficult ones. I wouldn't want to have to make some of the decisions that they have to make. Amen? I want them to be successful. I want whoever is president and becomes president to be successful. Do I have a certain person in mind? Yes, is there a certain person that I vote for or I'm going to vote for? Yes, but if the person that is elected is not the one that I voted for, I do not want that person to have bad luck or be cursed or anything else. I want them to be blessed. I want them to do well. Because if my president does well... Then what? My country does well. If my country does well, then guess what? My family does well. My church does well. My company does well. Are you with me this morning, church? So we got to trust God. We got to just trust God and say, you know what, God? I am going to surrender to you. I'm surrendering my finances to you. I'm surrendering this economy to you. I've surrendered my life to you. And I'm going to give this in faith, not only this week, but next week and the week after and the week after. And God, whatever comes my way, I know that you're in charge. I know that you are the king of glory. I know you are my creator. I know that I am your people. And I know that I'm going to be blessed with boundless blessings. So much so glory to God. One day I'm not going to be able to hold it. You got to step out in faith. And you got to give. And sometimes you got to give till it hurts. Sometimes it hurts. Amen. Sometimes it hurts. I know how it is, church, trust me. I know how it is to see what other people are doing and to see what other people are getting and you see what other people are buying. But let me tell you something, they don't own anything. They don't own nothing. They borrowing, borrowing just as much as they can and they're spending just as fast as they can and they're digging themselves a hole. Let me tell you something. What you're doing by giving unto God, uh, what you're doing by bringing the whole tithe to the storehouse, you are setting yourself up for boundless blessings and you are headed toward the King of glory. And you are going to be blessed, oh my goodness, beyond measure, church. Let me tell you something. You want to be great again? Make God great again. You want to be great again? You want your life to be great again? Make God great again in your life. Make God great again in your home. Make God great again in your automobile riding down the road. Make God great again. Amen. At your work. Make God great again in your neighborhood. Make God great again in the friends you're around. Make God great again if you want to make America great again. And do what God would have you to do. There's a day coming when the trust we have committed to His keeping shall be returned a million fold. Uh, the sacrifice, pleasures, money we gave, ambitions that we laid down, and friendships we forsook shall come back to us a million fold. Uh, but you got to sacrifice it. I know that there's things that you wish you could do. I know that there's things that you want to do. But church, we're committed to God. Amen. And we got to stay committed to God. Amen. 
He has full ownership of us. That time when our teardrops shall be diamonds. Amen. Our blood drops are going to be rubies. Our water into heavenly wine. That's what God's going to do for us. We must carry out God's will. Let that which we uh, uh, do be done as unto the Lord. Amen. Do everything that you do as if you're doing it to the Lord. If somebody needs something, give it to them as, as you're doing it unto the Lord. We had the Crumpler reunion yesterday. And, um, you know, we're, we're enjoying ourselves and we're eating a meal. We're having fellowship together. And, and there's this elderly gentleman that, that comes and sits down at the table with us. And I don't know who he is. Tracy doesn't know who he is. Wendy and Kelly don't know who he is. And, and we start just talking with him. And we're just having a good time. And we're having good fellowship. And, and then all of a sudden he's gone. And, and uh, Brother Eddie McKeel comes over and, and he says, uh, Brother Mark, do, do, do you know who that man was? And, and I said, no, Eddie, I, I don't know who he was. And we asked Brad, Brad, do you, do you know who that, who that man was? And they, they, they said, no. And then everybody got looking, well, where did he go? And who was he? Nobody knew who he was. Nobody. Nobody in the family. We asked all the different parts of the family. Who was that man? Tracy had actually done a, 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 a little video of the start of, of, the, of the reunion. And, and she had just a, a real quick flash of his, of his picture. And we were showing it. And everybody was like, we don't know who he was. And I said, well, bless God. He come and ate with us. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Eddie said, well, maybe we were entertaining angels. We don't know. But you know what? It didn't matter. He sat down with us, had a meal with us, had fellowship with us, and he was gone. You just don't ever know, church. Serving God is an exciting journey. It, it is. It's an exciting journey. And God will do things and God will show you things. If, if you've got your mind, listen to me now. If you've got your mind and if you've got your heart on the things of God, and if people would get themselves out of the way. I know you all are, are respectful people and, a, and an obedient people. I know that. I believe that in my heart. I don't have to look at a bank statement to know. But for some reason, God wants to get across to us. God wants to get across to this nation that we need to return back to Him and we need to surrender everything to Him. We need to surrender it all because He promises, church, boundless blessing. He says, I will open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. You know why you won't have room to receive it? Because you would have already had boundless blessings. Are you with me? You see how it works, church? You are just blessed of God. And if we make the surrender, make the investment, He will give us more blessing than we can contain. Heaven will be opened. All barriers will be removed. God will give us His unrestricted and unrationalized fullness. So many times heaven has been opened to receive uh, and it is not only open, but heaven is emptied, poured out, he says. Uh, God gives us not some blessings, but all blessings. Uh, not some riches, but himself and all his riches. Uh, he gives it all. And then there's the overflow. There shall not be room enough to receive it. People talk about 
how they go without. And people talk 